Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. Following the widespread devastation after Ian's landfall, and this morning, the storm is still on the move. The story ahead. Here at home, much calmer weather down to 66 degrees as our trend of wonderful weather mornings continues here in South Texas. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, September 29th. Thanks for joining us. So we hope you had a good week so far. And today, I'm glad that we're expecting more of the same. I mean, it's been nice. We'd like to keep this trend going into the weekend. If possible, Mike Coaster Age is here. We know rain is not a part of the forecast, but if we don't have the rain, we might as well have wonderful. And yes, that that's the situation. Question being, are we getting spoiled yet? No, <laughs> not such a thing. We deserve I, this. I, yeah, after this, yes, after this summer, we deserve it. Yes, indeed. So uh, another beautiful start this morning with temperatures again, 65, 53 in comfort, just about identical to what they were yesterday. 62 right now in Divine and Porto is already down to 61. Same thing at Rio Medina, and we still have very low humidity now. These numbers are actually up a little bit compared to yesterday. It's not that you really notice it that much, but uh, just a, a hint more humidity out there. Again, that's kind of splitting hairs. Mold is on the high side. Ragweed moderate. A little bit of pigweed is showing up. And throughout the rest of the morning, we will continue to dip down to 60 degrees. Still about six below normal. Clear, cool, and downright chilly in parts of the hill country. And then once again, a huge warm up. Dry air heats up very quickly, very easily. Get up to nine. So we'll be just about to two, three degrees above normal. Maybe a couple of extra clouds hanging around here and there as we go on into the weekend and the first part of next week. But still fantastic weather, minor fluctuations here and there. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, we'll see you then. We turn now to Hurricane Ian and its record-breaking devastation across the state of Florida. The storm surge submerged cities along the southwest coast after making landfall, and the threat is not over. The now weakened storm courses across the state on an eastern track. ABC's Justin Finch is in Tampa covering Ian's impact. Astonishing sights out of southwest Florida, where Ian made landfall as a forceful Category 4 storm whipping up walls of water in Fort Myers, swamping roads, leaving just the tops of cars visible. Just more than an hour later, those same cars completely covered, the water rising to reach treetops and roofs. Fort Myers, Caloosahatchee River overflowing into the city, flooding a downtown area. South of that area, Ian's force snatching down power lines in downtown Naples. The Naples Fire Department fighting through floodwaters to rescue this trapped driver. This map showing how much of this area has been flooded by storm surge with Ian still raging. Christopher Barcia has lived in Naples for nearly 30 years, recording this video as the water creeps up. That house halfway underwater, there goes my car floating away. Inland flooding, the deadliest component of hurricanes for the past 30 years. As Ian loses strength and moves northeast, President Biden warning Floridians. The danger is real. When the storm passes, the federal government's going to be there to help you recover. Florida under a state of emergency, fast-tracking disaster relief resources. Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina also declaring states of emergency with Ian forecast to move their way in just days. Ian's wind speed tied it for the fifth strongest hurricane to strike the U.S. along with several more storms. And this morning, the impact is still being felt. More than 2 million customers across Florida have lost electricity. 19,000 utility crews called in to restore power. Justin Finch, ABC News, Tampa. And this is a story we will be following closely all morning right now on our website. You can watch video of the storm surge. The damage is extensive. Just head over to ksat.com and look for this story on our homepage. And we've just learned the storm has now been downgraded to a tropical storm. In other headlines this morning, two people are dead. Ten others hurt after a crash involving undocumented migrants over in Uvalde. Uvalde police say Border Patrol spotted a black truck speeding on Highway 90 and then crashed into an 18 wheeler and another vehicle near Uvalde's downtown plaza. This happened last night. The injured and dead were all inside of the black truck. The other drivers are okay. 
Uvalde's police chief Daniel Rodriguez says incidents like these involving undocumented migrants happen all the time in Uvalde. This is an everyday occurrence. Uh, it's it's unfortunate that it's led to this. Uh, it was just a matter of time something like this occurred and we hate we, our hearts go out to to the lives that were lost and uh, but this is real. This is every day that it's happening and and uh, it's got to stop. Chief says DPS is leading this investigation. At this point, the status of the driver is unknown. And the time now, 435 and 66 degrees for now. Later this morning on Good Morning America, new details in the legal battle involving Shakira, what she's been ordered to do in Spain for alleged tax fraud. Plus, battle on the border after the break, the impact the trucker blockade had on produce makers' livelihood. If you have to head out the door for work early this morning, Good luck out there. The roads are looking really good right now. Upper and lower level 35 at Flores and Highway 281 at Isom. And taking a look outside with live cam right now, we're starting your day at 66 degrees. Very nice. Once again, we'll be right back. 438 has been nearly six months since the trucker blockade blacked up produce imports for days at the Far Reynosa International Bridge, costing the state millions of dollars in losses. These inspection measures proving to be ineffective. Now, the goal was to stop illegal trafficking of drugs and people, but according to DPS, the only violations dealt with safety violations, including defective lighting and tires. The biggest blow was the Texas economy and produce business owners. In 2021 alone, data showed that trade with Mexico generated more than $650 billion in economic activity. We talked to the owner of a McAllen-based produce company, and he says he is still struggling. Las ventas han bajado bastante. Ya ve que de la pandemia que se vino, pues hubo muchos problemas, cerraron restaurantes, todo eso y se bajaron las ventas. Ahorita pues se está vendiendo, pero no no mucho, poco, está, todo está bajo, todas las ventas están bajas. He says he's recovered from the blockade, but says sales are still low. He says his sales are about 65% less compared to pre-pandemic. Well, happening tomorrow night, you can watch the only scheduled gubernatorial debate right here on KSAT 12. We'll also be live streaming the debate on KSAT.com. We're also holding a virtual watch party for our KSAT insiders. To get in, use your phone's camera feature and scan the code. That will get you started. The debate will be held at UTRGV. Our Steve Spreester will be a panelist. He's already down there. That's all happening tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Of course, the election day is coming up on November 8th. And the time now is 440 and we are in the 60s this morning. If you're brewing some coffee this morning and you probably are, you'll want to keep it right here. Just ahead, the impact you may not know about. And welcome back. It's 443. As you get your coffee ready this morning, it's good to know that Morning Cup of Joe has its benefits. But 12 in your size, Marilyn Mortz takes a look at how much is too much coffee. Is that first sip of coffee the best part of your morning? Well, good news, coffee can actually be good for you. Coffee could actually lower your risk of certain liver diseases, some types of cancers, and type 2 diabetes. And there's some evidence that it can also lower your risk of heart disease and respiratory disease. Research even suggests that if you drink coffee, you could live longer than non-coffee drinkers, in part because coffee is rich in antioxidants. But how much coffee is healthy and how much is too much? In general, the average person can safely consume up to 400 milligrams of caffeine per day, the amount in three to five cups of coffee. If you have a medical condition or caffeine sensitivity, it's best to check with your doctor and listen to your body. If your heart is thumping faster than usual and you feel extra jittery, it's likely time to lay off. And to help you sleep better at night, experts say finish that last cup of joe around 2 p.m. so most of the caffeine has left your body by bedtime. Like tea too? Another study showed that people who drank two to three cups of coffee plus two or three cups of tea had about a 30% lower risk of dementia and stroke compared to people who didn't drink either. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And this week is your last chance to take part in our KSAT community food donations at any participating Randolph Brooks Federal Credit Union location. 
This is a map of all the participating locations. You can also find the list of that location on our website at kset.com. Donations are accepted through Friday. This is from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you grab your phone right now, you can scan that QR code on your screen. It will take you to our web article with a list of the 12 most wanted food items this month. So some of the items are peanut butter, cereal, rice, and canned soups. The food drive ends on Friday. Well, inflation is now affecting the most vulnerable children in South Texas, foster kids. RJ Market spoke with a local home that has been forced to turn away kids while it looks for more financial help. To be here and to see that there are kids that are needing help that don't get the help that they need, it really hurts. Yomi Jason knows firsthand the impact foster care homes can have on a child's life. But like many households, they are struggling financially. The inflation has been really uh, brutal here. Um, we've been hit even harder as a nonprofit organization. True Light Ministries in Seguin depends on funds from the community and state to operate. Adjacent says on average, True Light receives $90 a day per child from the state, but that money goes to the cost of operations, staffing, utilities, feeding, and sheltering kids. It takes about $3,000 a month to be able to help cater for our kids individually. So if you, if you multiply that by 25 kids, I mean, that's a whole lot of money. This is currently the home for six children here at True Light Ministries. Now, Yomi tells us that this is a 35-bed facility, but they have had to scale that back to 25 beds due to the rising cost to care for these children. If things don't improve a little bit uh, in the near future, we might even go down to about 20 beds. Uh, I see a really, really hates to have to say no to kids. The state has identified foster care funding as a problem. The recent legislature directed $70 million in general revenue to foster care supplemental payments and rate increases. True Light hopes to get that much needed funding soon, along with some help from the community. We've not really seen an increase in state funding um, to be able to help us. We need about $150,000 uh, to be able to get us back running again, be able to open our beds up, and that's the biggest thing that we need help with that can come from the state, but mostly come from our community. RG Marcus, KSAT 12 News. A quick look at the Rosewood Trans Guy looking out there at I-10 at Hackberry where things are moving and also looking at Highway 281 at Redland Road. It is 447 and we don't see any problems so far. Mike's here with a FIDO forecast. Yes, indeed. Everybody is loving the beautiful weather. Everybody. Yes. yes, I think everybody deserves to be spoiled a little bit. With we all this. enjoy the break. Yes, indeed. So uh, scan that QR code and it makes it really easy to download some of these and in some of these uh, KSAC Connect pictures. And uh, yeah, I mean, Presley Jane loves the weather. I don't know if she loves the weather more or the bowl of food, but uh, yeah, it's, it's just fantastic out there and it is going to continue. Now we are going to be seeing uh, temperatures get up to 90 again today, so just a couple of degrees above normal, but then we're starting off six, seven degrees below normal on average all around the area. So average it out and yes, we are on the cool side as opposed to for a couple of months there, we were so much on the warm side. Clear skies as of right now and uh, 65 out there at the airport. So we're already pretty much at our normal low temperature. A little bit cooler than that. Port SA 61 and low 50s parts of the hill country. Again, jacket and light sweatshirt. Pretty good idea when you step outside this morning. And yes, thank you to the dry air that is in place. Now, these numbers are actually up ever so slightly compared to this time yesterday. Now, it's not as though you're going to really step outside and notice any humidity, but it is is just a just a, a tad higher than what we've had yesterday. 60 uh, will bottom out at in the next couple of hours and then again warm up very quickly. 75 degrees already at 10 o'clock. Add another seven to that 82 at noon. And then we top off at 90 with plenty of sunshine. A little bit of a light to southeasterly wind. All right, here's the uh, latest. This is live radar coming out of Florida as of right now and you can pretty much see where the center of the storm is just to the south and east of Orlando and it's continuing to kind of work its way out in into the Atlantic Ocean. It's not going to gain that much more strength looking at uh, some of the National Hurricane Center uh, projections, which I'm going to show you in just a second. But the one thing that even though the you know, there was the storm surge and all obviously the heavy rain as it moved on shore in southwestern Florida, but now it's in 
the worst position, I guess you could say, as far as the upper Florida coast and going into Georgia because here's this storm and the counterclockwise flow is just grabbing onto all this moisture from the Atlantic and throwing it inland, and which is why they're going to expect a, is basically just heavy, heavy rain and flooding from that going up into northern Florida. So here's the very latest on it is a tropical storm, 65 mile per hour winds. It did make uh, landfall yesterday as a category four storm, very strong category storm for storm. Storm, and it will continue to work its way out into the open waters. Like I said, not gain that much strength as it kind of hugs the coast and then it's going to move on into the uh, Carolinas and work its way up in toward the Appalachians as a big rain producer out there. Again, nothing as far as that storm is going to have any effect on us. 82 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, good looking day today, and the high temperature is going to make it up to 90 and we'll just do it basically all over again tomorrow. The weekend, um, you know, maybe a couple of extra clouds hanging around here, perhaps just a tinge, a hint, skosh, more humidity, not as though you're going to notice it because we'll still have low temperatures down in the low 60s, still below normal. And then I think a couple of extra clouds going into next week will hold high temperatures down a little bit closer to uh, their respective normals. So a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But the yeah. clouds will help. Yeah, clouds will keep temperatures down ever so slightly. So yeah, get in the shade. You know, it's really nice, but still, you know, you hop in your, if your car sitting out in the direct sun. Yes. Yeah. It, it's still pretty hot on days like this. I agree. Thank you, Mike. 450, 65 degrees. And Arnold Schwarzenegger raising some eyebrows this morning. After the break, what he did that has some people asking questions. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, 884, Fireball 2. Daily four number, 8604, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 9, 10, 14, 16, 28. Lotto, Texas, 9, 27, 31, 40, 47, 54. And your Powerball numbers, 6, 10, 24, 33, 67, Powerball 11, Power Play 3. Good luck. In this morning's GMA First Look, one of the biggest superstars in music. Yeah. Oh, baby, when you talk like that ordered to stand trial on six counts of tax fraud. Shakira is accused of failing to pay 14 and a half million euros in taxes on income earned between a two year period from 2012 to 2014. If you're domiciled in Spain, you owe taxes and domiciled is defined for the most part as being there for more than half the year. A rep for Shakira has stated she primarily lived in the Bahamas during the years in question, not Spain, rejecting a possible plea deal last month, saying she, quote, has always cooperated and abided by the law, demonstrating impeccable conduct as an individual and a taxpayer. And Good Morning America will have much more on Shakira's upcoming legal battle coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. This is Rami. In Arabic, he's what is called Duniawi, lost in this world. Season three of Rami tackles some big issues. The critically acclaimed comedy is almost back after a more than two year hiatus. And show creator and star Rami Youssef talked to me about what he wanted to explore with his dysfunctional but loving Muslim American family this season. Where are we at with the American dream? And, and, and what does it take to, to achieve it? And, and looking at um, the, the seeming kind of impossibility of a middle class family and, and, and how difficult it is to, to kind of um, make good on, on the intentions of, of moving to uh, this country. All 10 episodes of season three of Rami are out Friday on Hulu. Actor and former California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger raising some eyebrows after a visit to the Auschwitz concentration camp in Poland Wednesday. He signed the visitor book, I'll Be Back, a famous quote from his movie Terminator, and a move some are calling flippant. The museum clarified in a tweet that the inscription was just meant to be a promise to return for a more in-depth visit. You've grown old, Daniel. Yeah, well, mortality beats a heavy drum. AMC debuts its interview with the Vampire series on Sunday, and it just announced it's already greenlit a season two, which will take place in Europe. And happy birthday, Halsey, the three-time Grammy nominee turning 28 today, while Shazam star Zachary Levi is 42. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. About three minutes away from 565 degrees. And we have a lot heading your way on our next half hour, including why TikTok 
removed millions of videos. Checking Transguide right now, see how things are looking out there on your very early Thursday morning. Beautiful shot of downtown and some of the uh, flyover ramps. And traffic looks really good right now. We'll check in with Stephen Cavazos coming up right here on GMSA. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It's Thursday, September 29th. We will get to weather and traffic in just a few minutes, but first let's get right to our top story this morning. Happening now, Ian has just weakened to a tropical storm. The damage is intense as it slammed into western Florida. The storm knocking out power to at least 2 million people and threatening catastrophic damage further inland. Now, the majority of Florida's citrus belt is under threat of heavy flooding rains over the next 36 hours. Forecasters are warning that it could gain strength again. CNN's Ivan Rodriguez is live in Punta Gorda, Florida. He joins us now with the very latest developments from the Sunshine State. Ivan. We are waking up in Punta Gorda to complete darkness and destruction. We've been without power and water for the last 12 hours, and you can begin to see some of that damage here as well. Behind me to the left, a trailer completely pushed onto its side by those heavy winds. We're also now learning that Ian has now a tropical storm. Holy. How is this possible? Tide is the fourth most powerful hurricane to hit the Sunshine State. Ian blasted ashore Wednesday just shy of a Category 5 storm, bringing with it catastrophic winds, life-threatening flooding, and torrential rain. The parking garage that we're in, still in right now with no power, is um, it, it, was, it was buckling, it was shaking. As daylight emerges, residents will get their first glimpse at the scope of the damage. Many residents trapped in their homes where they chose to ride out the storm. The Caloosahatchee River has flowed through the bottom floor of this house. Uh, and we're safe on the second floor. More than two and a half million residents were told to evacuate before the storm. Those who didn't will have to wait. We will get to them as soon as we can, as soon as the, uh, the winds die down, the water subsides, and they, the, the roads are cleared. And as Ian continues its destructive march across Florida, the Orlando area and parts of the East Coast are getting pummeled with that rain and wind. We were already expecting about 12 to 20 inches of rain. Some places could see up to 30 inches. So stay home, stay safe. Hold it. I gotta see this. Hold it here. The storm is still expected to produce heavy rains and strong winds over the next three days, especially going throughout Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. Here in Punta Gorda, a boil water advisory is also under effect. In Charlotte County as a whole, they're still looking as to whether or not they're going to start those emergency responses. A big part of that is going to be whether or not those hazardous conditions ease up a little bit. In the same case, it goes throughout other counties in Florida as well. Live in Punta Gorda, I'm Ivan Rodriguez. And you can see, I mean, it is pitch black out there. The only light is from the generator, news vehicles, right. that kind of thing. Yes, from all of their equipment, and that's it. Time now, 502 here locally. Uh, we, we have nice weather. It's 65 degrees right now. Yes, indeed. I was just going to add to that. I read excerpts of an interview done with the, one of the pilots of the Hurricane Hunter aircraft that flew through the storm just about the time it was making landfall. And he said that first couple of passes, because it'll go back and forth and check it out, only at 10,000 feet. And said the second or third and fourth passes, they said, did all they could to keep the aircraft flying and keep it from right side up because it, that storm it was just pounding it and said it sounded like a dump truck dumping, dumping rocks on the plane as far as the uh, all the hail and the lightning. There was visible damage to the exterior of the, the airplane as it went through that storm. 64 degrees right now, so we've uh, continued to cool down a little bit. Bottom number still remains low with the dew point down to uh, 49. We're going to make it up to 90 again, so once again, huge warm up will gain basically 30 degrees throughout the course of the day. The aquifer yesterday, another hit, went down another four tenths of a foot, and the allergens still got a lot of mold hanging around here. Ragweed is moderate, and pigweed is definitely on the, uh, the low side. All right, some of the temperatures as of right now, 
sweatshirt, light jacket, still a pretty good idea, and you definitely won't need it by later on today. 60 Port SA, 59 now burning stage, and comfort is down to uh, 52. So again, like yesterday, probably going to see a couple of upper 40s in portions of the hill country before it's all said and done. So clear, cool, chilly, however you want to uh, describe it. And then later on today, sunny. Again, fantastic. We'll do the same thing tomorrow, almost a cut and paste kind of weather. And then we go into the weekend and it's still going to be wonderful. A couple of extra clouds here and there. Uh, temperatures may not be low. Temperatures may not be as cool, but it'll still be on the below normal side. We'll still be in the low 60s. So it's great, great weekend. And next week, a few more extra clouds. Still nice, still no rain as we go into uh, next week. We get all the details for the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Stephen. Anything cooking yet? Well, uh, yeah, we do have some issues out there, Mike. We want people to be aware of. Let's get a quick look, though. I-10 at the Y, great shot there. Empty roads if you plan on heading up to the area. Uh, maybe in the next few minutes or so. No need to rush out the door, I would say, but always make sure you take it easy out there. Uh, but let's just get you to the map because the big issue was right along here, State Highway 151 in the westbound lanes. Uh, not far from Hunt Lane, a major crash actually shut down a portion of that area. Just saw the an update from the TxDOT website. We still see that it's closed off right now, and that's probably due to the TxDOT hero crews waiting to clear things up. Now, we did have Katrina Weber heading out to the scene. She drove past it, gave her a call. She told me that things look like they should be wrapping up pretty soon, so that's better news out there, but just make sure that you drive carefully. We'll watch the area, but keep in mind, no transguide cameras out in that particular area of town. But giving you a wide look at the map, uh, it's still pretty quiet very early in the morning and obviously we'll be talking a lot of these road closures, but if you plan on traveling into San Antonio, no issues here either. 28 minutes right now if you're traveling on I-37 northbound from Pleasanton, not too bad there, and 30 minutes on Highway 90 heading in from east, uh, pardon me, Castro Hill in the eastbound lanes of 90, and that arrival from Lytle looks to be about 17 minutes on I-35 northbound. So things look normal, but we take it back to Transguide with one last look around town, 410 at Perrin Vital. Not a lot of folks out there this early in the morning, but we'll watch roads closely and have those updates along 151 in the next few minutes. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. Just over 120 miles to the west of San Antonio is Kenny County, and they are feeling the effects of human smuggling. Just listen to what the sheriff there had to say. Here they go. Out of the truck, out of the front seat, out of the back seat, out of the bed. She's got him. They're still coming out of the truck. Sheriff Brad Coe says these scenes are becoming all too familiar in his county and specifically in the town of Brackettville. During a typical year, they would have one or two human smuggling arrests in a month. And this year, he says that number peaked at 75 in July. Sheriff Coe tries to keep as much of the smuggling and as many of the pursuits out of the main strip of town as possible, but it's not always successful. He says female smugglers present a whole new set of problems for the county very few places that will accept females. Well, we got that worked out. We've, we've contracted with a couple of counties around us to handle females. Now we're seeing it pregnant females because pregnant females, nobody takes pregnant females. For the last 18 months, investigators have been working with Operation Lone Star and Operation Stone Garden. They help the department with funding and equipment, but with the current increase in smuggling, it's not a pace they say they can keep up with. Tonight on the Night Beat, we'll show you how this is impacting landowners and business owners around the county. Look for that story tonight at 10 o'clock. And the Food and Drug Administration has issued new guidelines for what they are calling healthy food. Under new regulations, a product labeled as healthy must have the equivalent of a serving of fruits, vegetables, grains, dairy, or protein as indicated in the Dietary Guidelines for Americans. The new regulatory standard will limit the term healthy to circumstances in which the food accurately represents the levels of nutrients in food based on current nutrition science. The previous definition allowed manufacturers to use the term healthy on foods that the FDA said don't help consumers maintain healthy diets. Algae sufferers dealing with a big dose of ragweed and this year because of the drought, ragweed pollens will be a lot of fun. San Antonio ranked again this year as the fifth worst city in the entire country for allergies. Experts say your first line of defense is to get allergy tested so you know what you're allergic to. That way you can get treatment. There are three things you could do to help right now. Get a nasal steroid spray and over-the-counter antihistamine like Zyrtec. And finally, a daily nasal wash to rinse out all the pollen out of your nose every day. As for your daily cleaning routines, make sure your cleaning cloths and vacuums are equipped with HEPA quality fibers and filters.
And time now, 508 and 64 degrees for now. If you had a tough time sleeping last night, you're not alone. Still to come, the new sleep sensing gadget that is not a smartwatch. And good news if you're in the mood for Chinese. After the break, the new subscription service you may want to check out. Outside with live cam. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday morning. Wonderful temperatures out there as we take a live look near San Antonio International Airport. We'll talk to Mike coming up. A few cars on 410. We'll talk to Stephen as well. 512, this next story might make you hungry. You can soon get a subscription for Chinese food courtesy of P.F. Chang's. The popular restaurant chain is relaunching its seven-year-old loyalty program to include a paid tier for $6.99 a month. Members of the chain's Platinum Rewards program will earn 15 points for each dollar spent. It's redeemable for a $15 credit once 2,000 points are accumulated. Other Platinum member perks include being eligible for unlimited free delivery and access to priority reservations. The existing loyalty program's free tier will be renamed Gold and offer fewer benefits. We have a couple of those locations right here in San Antonio. Very true. Time now, 513 and 64 degrees for now. Google Maps introducing a new neighborhood vibe feature just ahead. What it can show you about what's new in your area. Meet Febreze's Miracle Spray, Febreze Fabric Refresher. I literally use this every day to make my house smell amazing. After I make the bed, after I catch my dog on the couch, so I can wear my jacket or jeans one more time before I wash them again. It even makes shoes smell fresh. It doesn't cover up odors with scent, but actually eliminates them. Over 1,000 uses. Febreze Fabric Refresher. Mornings are our time, and I couldn't let stiff joints slow me down. So I started taking OsteoBiflex every day because it has joint shield, clinically shown to improve joint comfort within seven days. OsteoBiflex. Find our coupons in Sunday's paper. Is that I don't belong to you and you don't belong to me. Hey, freedom, freedom. freedom doesn't wait. Libre, the original Eau de Parfum and the new Parfum Yves Saint Laurent. In today's Tech Bites, TikTok removing 113 million videos between April and June of this year. That represents about 1% of the total videos uploaded during that period. The majority were taken down for violating minor safety policies. And Amazon has introduced a sleep sensing lamp for people who would rather not wear their wristband or smartwatch to bed. The Halo Rise will gather data about your sleep from its perch on your nightstand without using a camera and it doubles as a sunrise alarm clock. It will cost you $140 when it comes out later this year. Finally, Google Maps is getting an update and will start helping users with a vibe. It, the new feature will let users view 3D renders of monuments and restaurants in locations they hope to visit. Google says the feature will roll out over the coming months. Those are your Tech Bytes. I'm Rhian and Ali. Have a great day. Time check, 517. At last check of the rose, things were looking good, but let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. That sleep machine made me feel sleepy. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't need that to feel sleepy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it cre it creeps me out just a little bit. Just, yeah. <laughs> just work a morning show. You'll fall asleep just fine, Yeah, hopefully, that's right? our secret. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a secret. Hey, let's get a quick look around town. We have a better news, better news to report there along State Highway 151. Uh, first, things look fine here on TransGuide. You can see things are moving just fine. No problems there. But uh, the big issue is really over here, uh, right there at State Highway 151, where we did have that crash. Looks like it's already cleared out. Pardon me. It's right over here uh, as you approach 410. But again, looks like that is cleared out, and we have a lot of green on the screen, so that gives us some time to talk about what will be taking place a little bit later tonight. I mentioned this earlier in the week. Bridge work will take place. It starts tonight, September 29th, and should finish overnight, at least a portion of it. 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when you'll see a full closure of the intersection right there at Overlook Parkway, so just make sure to be on the lookout for those crews if you drive through the area late at night or early in the morning, like a few of us here on GMSA. But let's get back to these TransGuide cameras. You can see right now 281 at Stone Oak, things look just fine so far, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Somebody spoiled rotten, and it's Aww. not Mike Osterhage. Well, <laughs> we were talking about sleep and all that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, cool mornings are fantastic if you can just stay in bed oh, with man. the covers over you. If you have the right blanket. That's a, that's a vibe. I know, yeah. I mean, so you know, getting up is one thing, but yeah, if you can just wow. you know stay in bed and... 
<laughs> cozy looking blanket. I'm a little mm -hmm. jealous over here. Oh. Yeah, it looks cozy. Me too. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Uh, scan that QR code and it makes it really easy to send us some of those great pictures. And boy, speaking of great, it's going to be fantastic all day long. Although it will get hot later on this afternoon. Watch it with, even though, you know, the, the concrete asphalt surfaces do get a chance to cool down somewhat overnight. Just be careful in the afternoon with that sun beating down. It is going to be warm. Okay, we've got lots of clear skies starting off this morning again. And humidity, dew points. Uh, uh, dew points are how we factor relative humidity, and they've been very, very low and are going to be staying that way for the next few days going in toward the weekend. Now, it is everything has to come to an end every once in a while, and it looks like by the mid to latter portion of next week, we'll start to see a bit more humidity around here, and that's going to hold low temperatures up ever so slightly, and also it's not going to be as crisp and cool out there. This morning we will uh, eventually drop down to 60 degrees and we're in the mid 60s right now. So once again, we'll still be on average around the area about five to 10 degrees below the normal low temperatures, which here in town is right around mid 60s as of right now. And then we make it up to 82 at noon, 90 high temperature later on this afternoon. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. Obviously there is nothing showing up on the uh, satellite picture, nothing but blue skies, just, just that nice vivid shade of blue. All right, head off to the east of us across the uh, Gulf of Mexico, and this is the satellite radar loop going past 12 out going back 12 hours and look as it makes landfall right there about Fort Myers, Florida takes that northeastwardly path and all of the very heavy rain. So the storm surge was down here and now it's the very heavy rain that is definitely going to be the problem. This is a live look at radar and you can see the heavy bands uh, right around Daytona Beach and that's going to continue and the Counterclockwise flow is just going to pick up all this moisture, obviously tap into the Atlantic Ocean, and it's going to be a huge rain producer right there along the Atlantic coast of Florida, and then going up into pretty much the Carolinas and Appalachian Mountains in the next couple of days. Tropical storm strength right now, it obviously lost a lot of strength as it moved across, uh, got out of the open waters of the Gulf and moved across Florida. Then it goes back into the Atlantic Ocean. Now, these computer models still have it just as a tropical storm, but you're out into almost the Gulf Stream out here, so wouldn't be surprised if it did regain hurricane strength as it goes out into the Atlantic Ocean. Then it's going to move back in inland and just be, like I said, a big rain producer there in portions of the Carolinas as well as the Appalachians and eastern Tennessee Valley. 82 degrees, sunny skies, then a high temperature today makes it up to 90 and just a, another glorious day. Same thing tomorrow. Cool morning, warm afternoon. We gain 30 degrees throughout the course of the day. A few more clouds hanging around here this weekend. Still those 30 degree swings in temperatures and a few more clouds around first part of next week. So I think highs will be down a little bit closer to respective normals and low temperatures are going to kind of ease up ever so slightly. Still great weather. Mike, I was just reading that uh, they said Ian could regain hurricane strength before it hit South Carolina. And just seconds later, you mentioned yeah. that there was a, a possibility. Which I, I kind of interesting with the, the hurricane center forecast, mm -hmm. keeping it at a tropical storm. But again, once it gets out there and that's the Gulf Stream right there, right. which water still warm. Yeah, very, very warm right yeah. there. So uh, wouldn't be surprised. But, you know, it. it his, what's in a name? You know, it's one mile per hour. The difference between a tropical storm sure. and a hurricane It's still going to be a huge, huge rain produce, and that's going to be the, the biggest problem right there along the Carolina coast. We'll be watching it. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 522 on your Thursday, 64 degrees. And just ahead, the movie news everyone is buzzing about this morning, plus the return of a big screen bodyguard. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three this morning, 884 Fireball 2, Daily 4, 8604 Fireball 4. Cash 5, 9, 10, 14, 16, 28. Lotto taxes, 9, 27, 31, 40, 47, 54. And your Powerball numbers, 6, 10, 24, 33, 67. Powerball 11, Power Play 3. Good luck. You don't look like a bodyguard. This is my disguise. <laughs> the Bodyguard is coming back to theaters for its 30th anniversary. The romantic thriller starring Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston in her film debut returns to cinemas on Sunday, November 6th and Wednesday, November 9th. 
the movie spawned the best-selling soundtrack album of all time, and a 30th anniversary vinyl release is due out November 18th. Showtimes and tickets for the screenings are available at thebodyguard30.com. Tom Hanks is writing his first novel. The two-time Oscar winner appears to be drawing on Hollywood for inspiration. It's titled The Making of Another Major Motion Picture Masterpiece, and it's centered on a colossal, star-studded, multi-million dollar superhero action film. The book is due out next May. We never really thought about it. I think Dave Bautista is on bouncer duty. Deadline reports the Guardians of the Galaxy and Dune star will play a club bouncer in Cooler. His character is blackmailed into finding a stolen drug-filled safe within 36 hours. Production is expected to start next summer. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 64 degrees. And we have our eye on the storm. After the break, a look at where Tropical Storm Ian is now and where it's headed next. We're gonna have a report from our sister station on the ground in Florida. And here's a look outside with live cam. We are very happy that we're starting at 64 degrees once again. One day closer to the weekend. Welcome back and good morning to you. If you're just now tuning in, it's Thursday, September 29th. Thanks for joining us. Let's get over to Mike to check on these wonderful temperatures. Yeah, it, it just doesn't really get any better than this. Um, for a lot of folks, maybe they'd like it cooler in the afternoon. Uh, speaking of the weekend, though, uh, this is going to be a great weekend to, you know, take a drive up into the hill country, something like that, because it is just going to be wonderful, wonderful, and uh, 64 degrees right now. Dew point stands at 49, so we still have some very dry air in place, which is why it's so comfortable out there. Jacket, sweatshirts, good idea, and then good idea to have a name tag in it for the kids. Stuff in the backpack later on because you won't need it later on this afternoon. Yesterday, of course, we had just those vivid blue skies in the afternoon, and that's what we're going to be seeing again today. A little bit, just a, a little bit of moisture, this lighter shade of gray, but the darker shade of gray indicates much, much drier air upstairs in the atmosphere and so once again we're gonna have those really really beautiful blue skies out there molds on the high side ragweed moderate pigweed is low and throughout the rest of today we'll make it up to 82 degrees at noon and once again top off at 90 so just a couple of degrees above where we should be in the afternoon but we're starting off on the, the cool side of things. Light little wind out of the southeast, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Can this great weather continue again, even past the weekend? We'll talk about that. And also, we're going to see if there's anything as far as any rain down the road. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, anything going on? No, in fact, uh, if you're still at home right now, enjoying that cup of coffee, don't chug it right now because there's not going to really be any need to rush out the door. You can see Trans Guide showing us a lot of quiet roadways. Obviously, the commute is getting going there at 35 at Flores. A little bit more folks out there this early in the morning. That's always expected as we get closer and closer to 6 a.m. And if you're familiar with the areas, you're going to know that we're going to see slowdowns a little bit later on. But if you are somebody that does have to head out in the next few minutes, looks like you're going to be in the clear. We take you to the map and you see a lot of the active construction that continues to take place. So I'll continue to mention that throughout the morning, but it doesn't look like anything's really slowing folks down just yet. And in fact, the same story right when we have those travel times and it looks like I forgot to put that into this rundown, but we'll get to those travel times right now and just check those out. Things are also looking good if you're going to be traveling into San Antonio in the next few minutes or so. So again, better update there if you're going to be traveling uh, here on the roadways, but back here on Transguide 35 at Space Center, things have been moving just fine. Pretty quiet, guys. Thank you, Stephen. We turn now to what is now Tropical Storm Ian. It is one of the most powerful storms to ever make landfall on the west coast of Florida. The extremely dangerous conditions will continue as it moves across the state and north towards Georgia and South Carolina. The surf appears to be improving in this live look, but when the sun comes up this morning, we will get a better look at how things are looking overall this morning. And Vic Michalucci with our sister station WJXT is staying on top of the story. He is in Northport. That is between Sarasota and Fort Myers, and he has the latest and takes a look at some of the homes that were destroyed by flooding. Hurricane Ian was a powerful storm, devastating for so many. Now it's moving out of this area of southwest Florida. We're only getting some of the outer bands, but we're getting our first look at some of the damage. This is in the city of Northport, where winds continued to whip on homes and businesses for hours. We can see straight into this mobile home. The awning fell onto this vehicle here. Now I want to walk you to this one where you can see the damage is even worse. Most of this home 
has been knocked down just to the foundation right here. The foundation staying because that is brick. Just about everything else torn away by these strong 150 mile an hour plus hurricane winds. We were sheltering nearby at a fire station and firefighters told us they were concerned because so many people in their area decided not to evacuate. And when they called 911, fire rescue, police and the sheriff's office were not able to respond because the winds were just too high. So for about seven hours, people were left to fend for themselves. This morning, there are about 150 911 calls that Northport police and firefighters have to catch up on. They are going door to door to check to see if anyone is inside, to look to see if anyone is hurt or potentially trapped. That could take hours. They are working into the night and they say that the sunlight will actually help them out, survey the damage more. But as you can see, if this mobile home park is just a small glimpse of the area, we know that damage is going to be extensive and devastating. And a lot of people are going to be spending the rest of the week without a home to go to. Of course, as soon as the sun comes up, we'll know much more. But for now, we are in Northport. I'm Vic Michelucci. Back to you. This is a story we'll be following closely all morning long. Right now at our website, you can watch video of the storm surge. The damage, of course, is extensive, as you saw. Just head to ksat.com and look for more on this story on our homepage. And other stories we are following this morning. Inflation is now affecting the most vulnerable children in South Texas, foster kids. True Light Ministries in Seguin depends on funding from the community and state to operate. They have had to scale back on services due to the rising cost to care for children. The state has identified foster care funding as a problem. You can read more about this story on our website at ksat.com. In other news, reserving parking spaces in advance at San Antonio International and fewer worries about full parking garages. That's part of what the city hopes could be coming out of possibly privatizing airport parking operations. The city says the packed parking garages have especially been a problem. With a lot of flyers now driving in, the airport has had to temporarily close its garages more than 50 times this year because they filled up. Now the city is looking for outside operators to propose plans to come in and optimize airport, airport parking. One idea, they want to see a way to reserve spaces in advance. And the city says changing the parking rates depending on availability could keep garages from filling. But the director of airports says that would mean lowering rates when necessary, not raising them. This specific request for proposal has nothing to do with price changes in our parking lots. Zero. Um, that, that's not something that we're considering right now. The bottom line for the city is maximizing the money they can bring in. In the long term, the airport has plans for adding spaces to keep up with growth. They could start building a new garage within a year or two, and they could start adding service surface lot spaces as early as the end of this year. We'll try to keep you updated right now. 537, 64 degrees. And shut down, shut down. After the break, we are talking about the battle over a funding bill. Outside with live cam and looking back towards beautiful downtown San Antonio on an early Thursday morning. Thanks for starting your day with us. We're going to circle back and check on Stephen Cavazo, see how the Thursday morning commute is going so far. We'll be back. Five forty. Welcome back. Congress rushing to avoid a federal government shutdown. Both chambers have to pass a funding bill and the president has to sign it by tomorrow. Otherwise, the government will run out of money. CNN's Amy Kiley reports on the last minute scramble. The clock is ticking for lawmakers to avoid a government shutdown. Time runs out on Friday. We must work fast to finish the process here on the floor, send a CR to the House and then send it to the president's desk. The good news is both parties seem optimistic. I think we've got this in the area where it should pass. One sticking point came from Senator Joe Manchin of West Virginia. He had wanted to include a permitting review change to help a pipeline running through his state. He withdrew the proposal amid bipartisan opposition. The result was a funding plan that 72 senators supported during a procedural vote Tuesday. The president asked for about 45 billion dollars in the supplemental. We've now negotiated it down to about 17. Those negotiations have continued right up to the final hours. 
a pattern in recent years. That's how you know it's fall in the United States. <laughs> when you can feel the first threat of government shutdown in the air. Even if lawmakers pass the current plan, they'll only fund the government until December 16th. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. 541, 64 degrees. And coming up, we are going to look at an interesting house uh, having to do with the Sanderson sisters. Yeah, I think it's about Hocus Pocus 2. We'll talk to Look at this little baby. Believe it or not, this one's only two months old. And my question for Lucy is, are your arms getting tired? Yes. Big dog. Yes, and, big chunkster right here. And, I mean, she is solid, <laughs> but oh my goodness gracious, with those paws on there, all oh, baby, who is this? Oh yes, this is Snooky. <laughs> two month old Pitbull Mix baby. And she is just the sweetest girl. Just wants to cuddle and give you love. And the most beautiful gray mm -hmm. eyes. They, they complement and match her coat so oh, well. Oh, yes. Going to be a big dog. Going to take up a lot of room on the couch. Big, big bags dog food. And this thing's going to be just solid as a oh, linebacker yeah. and just a big love and just hop into your bed too, right? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, what y'all got going on? Yes, yeah, so starting this Saturday, October 1st through our October 8th, we have our Empty the Shelters adoption event. Uh, we're uh, partnering with Bissell Pet Foundation. So all of our adult dogs and cats Cats who are a year and older, excluding our ambassador pets, are just $25 to adopt. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they'll have reduced adoption fees. Perfect time if you're looking for a new furry friend. Okay, and yeah. again, all the adult pets that adult. are a year and older. Yes, a year and older. So this one, year full price. And yes, you're not these one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're going to have a big full belly yes. to raise days. Well, okay. if you'd like to help out there, and again, because they've got to, you know, make room for other pets to come on in. So the yeah. uh, adoption event, just $25 for those adult dogs and cats one year or older at the San Antonio Humane Society, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. What a cutie. All right, welcome, neighbor, an endangered horse Produced by cloning back in 2020, is trotting with this species at the San Diego Zoo. Meet Kurt. Kurt was cloned from DNA, was frozen 42 years ago. Wildlife experts hope he can learn the behaviors of a wild horse, then breed in three to four years to genetically diversify the species. And check this out. Two years ago, Frank Moore started a garden. He decided he wanted to go big or gourd home. He studied up on growing giant pumpkins, and this is his third attempt at squashing his goals. Even his dad is getting in on the competition, building the pumpkin's greenhouse and waking up at 6 a.m. to feed it. So Morris will go pumpkin picking next week, hoping his fruit is the jack of all lanterns. Airbnbers can run amok in Salem, Massachusetts at a replica cottage of the one featured in the movie Hocus Pocus. The special rental has been recreated in celebration of Hocus Pocus 2 available on Disney Plus tomorrow. Two guests can stay at the Sanderson sisters home on October 12th for just $35. I think it'd be a little spooky. <laughs> Possibly. 547, 64 degrees. Go ahead and check in with Stephen. Would you stay there? Well, it's another glorious morning. I'll say that. It makes me sick. No? That's more Hocus Pocus stuff? That's Hocus yes. Pocus. <laughs> Hocus I, Pocus. Never, I never saw it. I'm familiar with it, but I never saw it. What? Mike? Whoa, Whoa. Steph. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, okay. Well, we'll talk later. <laughs> I'm on board. <laughs> All right. Hey, it is spooky season, but nothing spooky about traffic right now. Let's get a quick look at the roadways. You can see there things have been quiet throughout the morning. Really haven't had a lot to talk about, which is great news. If you have to head out the door in the next few minutes, you can see 37 uh, things are moving. But of course, we always want to make sure that you know what you can expect. Travel times didn't get a chance to mention this a little bit earlier, but if you are going to be heading into San Antonio, you can see no issues right now, but it looks like you're going to be in the clear. 29 minutes. Still pretty green from Seguin on I-10 westbound. A little more than half an hour on 87 if you're traveling up from uh, 37, or pardon me, Lavernia right now at about a 28 minute drive time from Floridasville. So things have been quiet so far and again, nothing spooky about the roads, but right now, of course, we're going to keep our eye on things and let you know what you can expect throughout the morning. Yes. Thank you, Stephen. Mike, uh, to, to see Hocus Pocus, you gotta you got to remember where you were in 1993. That's when it came That's out. That's that old? It is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wow. And was it Sarah Jessica Parker saying she had to go back and watch 30 years. again because she'd only seen, only it, seen once. it once? That was interesting. I would think, you know, you'd want to see your work several times, which 
I've seen it more than she has. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what, what it's like to be in a movie like that. If it's a you know really good movie that everybody watch, you know the movies we watch all the time. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Do the stars? They're probably like yeah, whatever. I guess it let's depends move, on well, the Let's person. move on to the next project, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, maybe. Interesting. That I wonder if that's like the longest uh, number two movie, the span between one and two. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't. I don't, yeah, I don't really know. Almost. I mean, almost what thirty mm. years? Jeez. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Here's a cute little picture, and Gibby thinks that San Antonio is number one when it comes to tacos. I think we all agree with that one. So, which then raises the question about breakfast tacos. Oh man, who's going to run? Mark. Okay. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. Uh, beautiful. Aye. Uh, nice morning to uh, wake up and get outside. Make you know, get out there and enjoy these pleasant temperatures early this morning. Right now we're at 60 Rio Medina, low 50s Hill Country, 55 in Balverde, 60 at Port SA. Yeah, just fantastic. A little bit milder up the road in New Braunfels, but overall these numbers are well, are going to be five, 10 degrees on average below the respective normal low temperatures, which is mid 60s for us. We did make it up to 89 yesterday. Yesterday, 92 in Hondo. More, let's see, uh, more 80s on the map than 90s. Yeah, it looks like it there. Maybe 50-50. Uh, a uh, little bit warmer, obviously, in New Braunfels, and it's going to be up to 93 today. But we will be in and around 90 degrees, give or take a couple of notches here and there, all around the metropolitan area later on this afternoon. Again, dry air. Keep talking about this, how it does not hold the heat in. That's why we've been cooling down past few mornings and then it heats up very easily. It doesn't take as much energy to heat up dry air as it does moist air. 60 this morning, bottom out there. And uh, well, you make it up to the low 80s today at noon. Lots of sunshine, just those vivid blue skies again, and 90 for a high temperature later on today. Of course, we've got to keep checking on Ian, which is now a huge, huge rain producer, and it's going to continue just to sort of work its way right up along just out off the coast of Florida and then it's in the the perfect position to be a big rainmaker like that because it pulls in obviously around that counterclockwise rotation all of the moisture from the the Atlantic Ocean in this case so it's down to tropical storm strength 65 mile per hour winds and it will continue to work its way back out into the open waters which gets out here and even though Hurricane Center forecast models have it staying at tropical storm strength uh, out here again is the uh, the uh, the um, Gulf Stream. Thank you. Gulf Stream. Oh, Gulf Stream. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, which is that warm band of water. And so it's uh, probably has a pretty good chance of gaining some strength or regaining hurricane strength, I should say, once it gets out over the open waters in the Atlantic and the Gulf Stream. And then it's going to move back on uh, land and be just a big rain producer off there to the uh, east of us. And here's what it looks like with the upper level steering winds. There's the storm staying out there. We've got this high, which is keeping this continental air in on top of us, which is the beautiful air that we are enjoying as of right now. This thing's going to be working its way sort of down uh, in toward the, the Gulf of Mexico. Got a couple of uh, systems moving across, but we're not really seeing any great like fall type weather pattern. What you want to have is the high off to the west, a big low off there up to the northeast of us, pulling these fronts on through here. So with this kind of pattern, we're not really going to be seeing any sort of a, a, a big, big change at all to our weather, which is not necessarily a bad thing right now, although we could use obviously some rain. 82 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, high temperature makes it up to 90, plenty of sunshine out there and Take today's weather, cut and paste it tomorrow, mm, right around 60, upper 50s, upper 80s, and then we'll start to see a few more clouds over the weekend and then more on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I think that's going to hold temperatures down ever so, slight, ever so slightly, which those numbers starting off next week are closer to the normal high temperatures. So. Okay, What's looking pretty today? good. Gulf Stream. Gulf Stream. Everybody's got it. <laughs> yep. Thank you, I wouldn't, Mike. I, was, I wasn't guessing correctly anyway. I'm glad you got it. 553, 64 degree. He'd already said it, so I was just copying Green. him. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look outside with Transguide right now. Looking over there at Highway 90 and 35, also at 37 and 35 at Florida. Things looking good right now. We'll be right back.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, that Category 4 hurricane, Fiona, is on the move, and it's closing in on Bermuda. By tomorrow morning, we'll be seeing impacts there, and then eventually to Canada this weekend. Plus, another storm trying to take shape eventually in the Western Caribbean and perhaps in the Gulf of Mexico. We'll be tracking that. And then the breaking news overnight, the latest on the major setback for former President Trump. The battle over those Mar-a-Lago documents and Donald Trump firing back after being hit with a $250 million civil lawsuit. We're going to have that and so much more right here on GMA. This is Rami. In Arabic, he's what is called Duniawi. Lost in this world. Season 3 of Rami tackles some big issues. The critically acclaimed comedy is almost back after a more than two-year hiatus. And show creator and star Rami Youssef talked to me about what he wanted to explore with his dysfunctional but loving Muslim-American family this season. Where are we at with the American dream? And, and, and what does it take to, to achieve it? And, and looking at um, the, the seeming kind of impossibility of a middle class family and, and, and how difficult it is to to kind of um, make good on, on the intentions of, of moving to uh, this country. All 10 episodes of season three of Rami are out Friday on Hulu. Actor and former California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger raising some eyebrows after a visit to the Auschwitz concentration camp in Poland Wednesday. He signed the visitor book, I'll Be Back, a famous quote from his movie Terminator, and a move some are calling flippant. The museum clarified in a tweet that the inscription was just meant to be a promise to return for a more in-depth visit. You've grown old, Daniel. Yeah, well, mortality beats a heavy drum. AMC debuts its Interview with the Vampire series on Sunday, and it just announced it's already greenlit a season two, which will take place in Europe. And happy birthday, Halsey, the three-time Grammy nominee turning 28 today, while Shazam star Zachary Levi is 42. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Coming up, the latest on Tropical Storm Ian. Mike is tracking where it's heading next. Good morning. Right now, we want to get to late breaking news. San Antonio police are wondering who is to blame for a big mess in the middle of a southeast side neighborhood. Katrina Weber is live in the 4700 block of Pecan Grove near East South Cross. And Katrina, we understand it involves a fiery crash and some destruction. Indeed it does, and you can see that uh, the car that was involved in that fiery crash right here about to be towed away, but all over this street, the 4700 block of Pecan Grove, just a big old mess. These, this is a residue from bricks that were all over this street. The police believe that whoever was in this car took out at least one of these brick mailboxes, scattering those bricks wide across the street. The car stopped uh, against a curb and burst into flames. They got a call just before 5 o'clock this morning that uh, from someone who heard that crash, then saw the car on fire. That person reported seeing someone walking away from the crash. Police were all over this neighborhood trying to find that driver who they suspect possibly could be hurt. They actually flew their helicopter overhead, but they never did find out who was behind the wheel. We had firefighters out here when we arrived. They were actually using shovels to get all these bricks, bricks off the road. Uh, and you can see that there's still some water and foam from where they had to put out the fire. But again, a big mystery here in the Southeast Side neighborhood as to who is to blame for all of this destruction. Reporting live on the Southeast Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. All right, let's get a look at the roadways right now. It's 602 this morning. Uh, things are moving. You can see there at 410 at Callahan. But uh, as Katrina was bringing us the information there at the scene, we did have a new crash that popped up along 281. Now it is quiet right now, as you can see on the map, for majority parts of San Antonio and our surrounding areas. But let's get you in there as we take you into the map right now. 281 southbound near at Sunset Boulevard is where that crash has been picked up. I got to get a friends at Transguide on the phone to find out exactly how this is going to impact the commute, but right now it doesn't really look like it is causing any issues in the southbound lanes of 281. Uh, now, if you're going to be traveling, of course, we are going to see a little bit of slowdowns if you're traveling on 281 southbound from Bulverde. 28 minutes already in the yellow there, and it's about 23 minutes, though. Still pretty good if you're the journey, taking the journey from Bernie on I-10 eastbound. With, again, 23 minutes at this point, and it's a 25-minute drive time on I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels, but checking the corner of my eye here at Transguide, things look fine, but we bring it back here and you can see the commute is already picking up guys. Mike.
Thank you very much, sir. And another uh, glorious day. We're going to be watching for uh, probably next uh, maybe half an hour or so to see the glow of the sunrise. And it's going to be another just picture perfect postcard kind of a sunrise. 63 now here in town. So we've dropped down another couple of degrees. We'll continue to drop down another few degrees this morning. 52 in Comfort, 54 Balverde and uh, Hondo right now is coming in at 58 degrees. Here's a quick check of radar over there with uh, what is now downgraded to tropical storm Ian. It is still obviously very strong winds, about 65 mile per hour sustained winds, but now it is the big problem is the rain, which is covering most of the uh, Atlantic coast in the north and western northeastern portion of uh, Florida, and that's going to continue to work its way out into the Atlantic and then be a big rain producer up in the uh, southeastern United States. We're going to have more on this and more on our forecast. More great weather today, but the question is, will it last into the weekend? Those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you very much. We do turn now to Tropical Storm Ian, a record breaking devastation across the state of Florida. The storm surge submerged cities along the southwest coast after making landfall, and the threat is not over. The now weakened storm courses across the state on an eastern track. ABC's Justin Finch is in Tampa covering Ian's impact. Astonishing sights out of southwest Florida where Ian made landfall as a forceful Category 4 storm. Whipping up walls of water in Fort Myers, swamping roads, leaving just the tops of cars visible. Just more than an hour later, those same cars completely covered, the water rising to reach treetops and roofs. Fort Myers' Caloosahatchee River overflowing into the city, flooding a downtown area. South of that area, Ian's force snatching down power lines in downtown Naples. The Naples Fire Department fighting through floodwaters to rescue this trapped driver. This map showing how much of this area has been flooded by storm surge with Ian still raging. Christopher Barcia has lived in Naples for nearly 30 years, recording this video as the water creeps up. That house halfway underwater, there goes my car floating away. Inland flooding, the deadliest component of hurricanes for the past 30 years. As Ian loses strength and moves northeast, President Biden warning Floridians. The danger is real. When the storm passes, the federal government's going to be there to help you recover. Florida under a state of emergency, fast-tracking disaster relief resources. Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina also declaring states of emergency, with Ian forecast to move their way in just days. Ian's wind speed tied it for the fifth strongest hurricane to strike the U.S., along with several more storms. And this morning, the impact is still being felt. More than two million customers across Florida have lost electricity. 19,000 utility crews called in to restore power. Justin Finch, ABC News, Tampa. This morning, leaders with insurance giant USAA based here in San Antonio are urging people to prepare for severe weather by keeping your homeowner's insurance policy up to date. This comes after Ian made landfall Wednesday afternoon in Florida. The CEO of USAA, Wayne Peacock, says company leaders have staged disaster response teams to assist more than 600,000 hurricane-prone clients after the storm. He's using this time to remind people here at home that hurricane season will remain in effect and through November 30th. And while we're far from the coast here, we could still experience flooding from a major weather event. Your checklist together um, to get your plan together of where you might evacuate to. And I think over COVID, a lot of um, folks have gone in and done upgrades to their homes. So it's a great time to get with your insurance agent or call your insurance company directly like at USAA um, and update your coverages. If you're unsure whether you live in a flood prone area around San Antonio, visit our website, ksat.com, for instruction on how you can find out. There is other news this morning. Two people are dead, 10 others hurt after a crash involving undocumented, mi undocumented migrants in Uvalde last night around 6 o'clock. Uvalde police say Border Patrol spotted a black truck speeding on Highway 90. It then crashed into an 18 wheeler and another vehicle near Uvalde's downtown plaza. 
The injured and dead were all inside of the black truck. The other drivers are okay. Uvalde Police Chief Daniel Rodriguez says incidents like this involving undocumented migrants happen all the time in his town. This is an everyday occurrence. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate that it's led to this. Uh, it was just a matter of time something like this occurred and we hate, we, our hearts go out to, to the lives that were lost. And, uh, but this is real. This is every day that it's happening and, and uh, it's gotta stop. Chief Rodriguez says the Department of Public Safety is leading this investigation. At this point, the status of the driver is unknown. Last Chance Ministries Church is left picking up the pieces after being burglarized and vandalized. The pastor there calling this an act of hate more than anything else. Now, according to the pastor, sometime between Monday night and Tuesday morning, a handful of iPads, laptops, as well as three catalytic converters were stolen. Church and shuttle bus windows were shattered and the pastor believes a brick and PVC pipe were used to try and break parts of pillars. Also, an anointing oil used for blessing was used to send a message. They grabbed the bottle and they just poured all over on the altar where we pray. And I, I think it's more of an act of hate because they could have taken a lot of stuff and it wasn't like that. It was more of a, just like, an, like, like somebody was angry. And again, Pastor Jimmy Robles from Last Chance Ministries here in San Antonio says they are looking at about $10,000 in damages and stolen items, not counting the catalytic converters. He plans on adding security cameras to prevent this from happening again. And as for the San Antonio Police Department, they tell us they are investigating, but they do not have any suspects at this time. And just a reminder, tomorrow we will have live coverage of the debate. You can scan that code on your screen right now to keep up with us and all the updates that we're going to have. Myra Arthur and Stefania Jimenez will be answering your questions virtually. The debate will be held at UTRGV and our Steve Spreester will be a panelist. That is this Friday at 7 p.m. Election Day is November 8th. Time right now, 610, 63 degrees. And TikTok is removing about 1% of videos made in April and June of this year. Why they say those videos needed to be taken down. Latest on the war in Ukraine, Russia close to claiming parts of Ukraine as their own. Why the White House is calling it a sham. And we really don't mind this copy and paste forecast. Well, at least I don't. Looking out there with live cam, a nice 63 degrees right now. We'll be right back. Just about 614 now under the war in Ukraine. Russia getting close to declaring parts of Ukraine as its own through a referendum vote. The White House is calling a sham. This as the mass exodus out of Russia continues. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the mass exodus out of Russia shows no signs of easing. Hundreds of thousands of Russians scrambling to flee across Russia's borders. In Georgia, the mass exodus of men, alone or with their families or friends, began shortly after Putin called for 300,000 more troops. Since then, cars have been forming long, snaking lines like this one. ABC's Britt Clinette is on the border. All these people behind me have been on a days-long journey from Russia. They say that they don't have any plans, but they just need needed to get out. Many of them are relieved, they are exhausted, but they say they had no choice. People like Dmitry, who spent seven days trying to escape Russia. I don't want to kill people and I don't want to be killed. I don't need this war. I don't support Putin. The mass exodus coming on the heels of what the White House is calling a sham referendum in occupied parts of Ukraine. Putin is expected to use the results to declare the regions are now part of Russia as early as this Friday. Russia has now announced the pre-baked results of its sham referendum. These results were concocted in Moscow, not collected in Ukraine. We have seen videos and reports of armed officials going door to door, intimidating voters. The White House says it's preparing to add new sanctions on Russia for the referendums and announce another $1 billion package of weapons and equipment for Ukraine. And now the EU Commission president calling on the 27 member countries to also administer more sanctions on Russia. So we propose sweeping new import bans on Russian products. This will keep Russian products out of the European market and deprive Russia of an additional 7 billion euros in revenues. The United States has now given nearly $17 billion of aid to Ukraine since the Biden administration took office. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington.
Now 16 minutes past the hour. And it looks like we have some problems off of 281 and 410. Let's go ahead and check with, with Stephen Cavazos. Big problems. You're really going to need to those phones in just a minute because we're going to send a push alert out to give you some extra information. Now, this is a pretty serious crash there, not far from the airport. Closest shot that our friends at Transguide could get us at this point. But you can see those flashing lights and what appears to be a flyover ramp off in the distance. I got to get them on the phone to find out exactly if we can zoom in a little bit more. But uh, this is a pretty serious crash because it's actually shut down a portion of 281 southbound heading in from 410 to Sunset Boulevard and we have it right there. You're already seeing that buildup that's taking place there along the map. It's not looking good, especially at this point where we are going to see a lot more folks getting out there and getting their morning started early. So just keep this in mind. I'm going to look for those solutions for you throughout the morning, but we do have a pretty serious crash and we'll work to gather that information throughout the morning. But let's go ahead and give you a quick look at the map because thankfully there's not a lot else to talk about. It's been very quiet, but on the topic of 281, just make sure to know what to look ahead for. We mentioned this earlier. Just another quick reminder there 281 North San Antonio. That bridge work is going to take place again tonight. Thursday, September 29th should continue up until Friday, September 30th. Again, it is overnight 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Full closure of the intersection at Overlook Parkway. But as I mentioned, grab those phones, open your camera app and scan that QR code. It has not just a list of all the closures that are taking place in and around the Alamo City, but also push alerts, which we just sent one out right now. Mark looks like you also received it. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, make sure you have that KSAT mobile app handy with you. Uh, you stay updated with all the things that are taking place on our roadways. Oh yeah, you're definitely covered, Stephen. I think we yeah. got two during your, your traffic presentation. Yeah. Thank awesome. you very much. Thank you. And the school bus definitely take a little light sweater there. Yes, uh, especially in the hill country. Sweatshirt, jacket, uh, light sweater because we've got some temperatures down in the low uh, 50s there. We will drop down to 60. We're at uh, 63 as of right now. Clear, cool. Another just spectacular day. We're going to be up around 90 today. Yesterday we hit 89, so it's going to be within a degree or two of that. Just a couple of notches above normal. Low humidity, really nice. But I mean, it does get pretty warm out there in the uh, direct sun. Yep, it is getting to be that time. Shh. Don't tell everyone the skeletons are coming. I love how the skeleton's getting all made up there in the bathroom, getting ready for you know, <laughs> Halloween and everything. This is Oscar is back, yeah. sharing yeah. pictures from a neighborhood that for a couple of years now has done skeleton yeah. uh, those, those sketches. Like, like daily. Almost daily. Yeah, yeah. yeah so those are going to be starting. I love the towel wrapped around the skeleton too. So I, I love this. Scan, I know. <laughs> scan this QR code, and that's going to help you download the uh, and send us some of these KSAC Connect pictures. So thank you very much for the uh, the skeleton picture. All right, we uh, not seeing the glow of the sunrise as of yet, but boy, it's going to be a doozy once again. 59 Bernie stage, like I said, low 50s in parts of the hill country, 63 in town. Jack, it's a pretty good idea. And uh, thanks to the dry air, but these numbers have gone up compared to yesterday and a couple a couple of days ago when we had dew points in the low 40s. As a matter of fact, today compared to yesterday, it's gone up seven degrees here in town, 13 in Rock Springs. Now, it's not as though you necessarily feel the humidity when you step outside, but there's just a little bit more of it, and that really doesn't allow the air to cool down quite as as quickly as the really, really dry air does. But like I said, we will drop down a few more degrees to 60 this morning and then warm up nicely. Make it up to 82 at noon and we'll make it up to 90 for a high temperature later on today. And then once the sun goes down, temperatures will drop off fairly quickly. Here again is a view of what is now, pardon me, should change that banner to Tropical Storm Ian, and it has 65 mile per hour winds. It's going to be a huge rain producer in this position right here with that counterclockwise flow. It continues to throw all the moisture into the uh, the Gulf Coast or excuse me, the Atlantic Coast of Florida as well as southeastern United States. And as it moves into the Atlantic Ocean, it may actually regain strength because it's going to be right there in the Gulf Stream, that nice warm river of water that moves through the Atlantic Ocean. So even though this model has it uh, still at tropical storm strength, it may briefly gain hurricane strength out there. Elsewhere in the tropics, there's tropical depression number 11, but it's not going to be doing anything. Just kind of uh, languishing out there in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Now, as far as we are concerned, 82 degrees, sunny skies, and then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 90. Plenty of sunshine out there. We are going to cut and paste, do it all again tomorrow. And pretty much uh, on Saturday, just a couple of extra clouds hanging around here. Very, very nice weather. Humidity is going to try 
creep in a little bit more. A um, couple of more. That's just going to hold low temperatures up ever so slightly, but still it's going to be really, really nice weather. A few more clouds starting off next week. I think will hold highs down a bit. Before we get any further, I want to mention happy birthday to KSAT Consumer Reporter Marilyn Morris. Happy, happy birthday, birthday Marilyn. Marilyn. Happy birthday, Marilyn. 621, 63 degrees. And Amazon is releasing a new lamp that could help you wake up in the mornings. We're going to tell you how it's doing so all by just being on your nightstand. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide my skin? Not me. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. Hide my skin? Not me. And for kids ages six months and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. With Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin, not me. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. In this morning's GMA First Look, one of the biggest superstars in music yeah. oh, baby, when you talk, ordered to stand trial on six counts of tax fraud. Shakira is accused of failing to pay 14.5 million euros in taxes on income earned between a two-year period from 2012 to 2014. If you're domiciled in Spain, you owe taxes, and domiciled is defined for the most part as being there for more than half the year. A rep for Shakira has stated she primarily lived in the Bahamas during the years in question, not Spain, rejecting a possible plea deal last month, saying she, quote, has always cooperated and abided by the law, demonstrating impeccable conduct as an individual and a taxpayer. And Good Morning America will have much more on Shakira's upcoming legal battle coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Amazon has introduced a new sleep sensing lamp for people who would rather not wear a wristband or smartwatch to bed. The Halo Rise will gather data about your sleep from its perch on your nightstand without using a camera. And it doubles as a sunrise alarm clock. It will cost $140 when it comes out later this year. TikTok says it removed 113 million videos between April and June of this year. That only represents about 1% of the total videos uploaded during that period. The majority, they say, were taken down for violating minor safety policies. And Google Maps is getting an update and will start helping users with a vibe. The new feature will let users view 3D renders of monuments and restaurants in locations they hope to visit. Google says the feature will be rolling out over the next few months. Time check, 626, 63 degrees. The FDA has released new food guidelines for what they are viewing healthy food as. What those are, coming up in the next half hour. Are right, you wanting to renovate your home, but you don't know who to call? We'll give you some advice on who to call for when it comes to starting those home projects not Ghostbusters. Looking over at Highway 281 at Sprucewood, looks like there's a lot of problems there. We did check in with Stephen Cavazos early. I brought this. We're going to check back with him after the break. Outside with live cam, lovely weather continues. Temperatures in the low 60s here in town. But we're going to talk more about Ian coming up. That is the top of mind this morning. That's right. Good morning. And right now we are keeping a close eye on Tropical Storm Ian. And as the sun comes up, we will get a better look at how things are looking this morning. Vic Michelucci with our sister station WJXT is staying on top of this story for us. He's in Northport, which is between Sarasota and Fort Myers. He has the latest and takes a look at some of the homes destroyed by flooding. Hurricane Ian was a bully to this area. We are in the city of Northport. It's in between Sarasota and Fort Myers, and it took a brunt of this storm. 
coming through as a category four. We sat at a fire station for hours as that station got battered. Part of the roof actually got torn off. Part of the wall came in. Now we are getting a first glimpse at some of the damage around here. Take a look. This is a major road. It's blocked off by what appears to be some sort of giant awning. And if you look over here, you can see this entire parking lot is underwater. Much of that Kia right there under the floodwaters right now, and it doesn't look like they are receding anytime soon. If you look all around, you will see damage, whether it is trees that are bent over, signs that are gone, lights that have just been ripped apart. We also went to a mobile home park. Unfortunately, there some homes destroyed down to the foundations. Now, firefighters and police officers were not able to respond during the height of the hurricane. So for about six to eight hours, depending on where you were, people who called 911 were not able to get first responders. They had to fend for themselves. Overnight, those firefighters, those rescuers went out looking for anybody, anybody who stayed here despite those evacuation orders, looking for anybody who may be trapped. They told us that they had about 150 911 callers that they had to go out and see if they were okay for. So we are waiting for more details about them. But in the meantime, when the sun comes up, we are definitely going to see a lot of damage and a lot of cleanup ahead for residents here in Southwest Florida. In Northport, I'm Vic Michalucci. Back to you. All right, much more on that coming up today at 7 o'clock on Good Morning America. And here at home, we are starting in the 60s again. Uh, I don't mind copy and pasting this forecast. Not at all, Mike Ostrage. We can order more. As a matter of fact, you want to keep this train rolling for a while now. That's fine. Yeah, it's wonderful. You know, if we might as well have great weather because we're not getting any rain, unfortunately. That's the downside of this forecast. You know, it'd be nice to get a, a few days of some uh, good soaking rain, but unfortunately, that is just not to be found anywhere. So yeah, might as well have great looking, uh, great looking weather. It almost looks like there wants to be a bit of the glow of the morning sunrise, which is going to be once again, just sort of picture perfect out there. 63 right now. We're uh, just a handful of degrees below the average normal low temperature this time of year. Dew point still very low, but it has come up in the past couple of days. Uh, still, you don't really feel it when you step outside though. 59 Rio Medina, 52 in comfort. Yeah, jackets pretty good idea this morning or a sweatshirt. Mold is high. Ragweed is moderate and just a little bit of pigweed out there. And yeah, clear, cool, chilly, depending on where you are. And then just sunny, beautiful. Same thing tomorrow. A fantastic weather and it's going to stay very beautiful over the weekend with a couple of extra clouds around here. And I think we see a few more clouds going into the first part of next week, but overall still really pleasant temperatures. Lows are going to be just about or a little bit below the normal low temperature, and I think the clouds are going to keep temperatures, high temperatures down a few degrees. But once again, still nice, but still no rain. All the details of the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority got some issues out there, right? Major problems. My 281 uh, Sprucewood is a shot from Transguide. It is looking like a nightmare, and uh, it's although with the shots are showing really not anyone out on the roadways at this point, you're seen a lot of buildup there along the frontage, and that's because we are seeing some closures due to an incident involving a pedestrian. Now, word, uh, we don't have any uh, major, we don't have a lot of information, I should say, at this point. We are working to get that, and of course, we'll bring it to you throughout the morning, but you can see that buildup is already taking place, and it is in one of the busiest spots in town, 281 right by the airport. You can see that portion is shaded out. That's actually between Sunset Boulevard and Jones Maltzberger along 281 South, and that's why we are seeing that buildup that is continuing continuing to stretch along the southbound lanes there. Now, again, we are working to get that information for you, but this, this, this is reported right now by Texot to be an incident involving a pedestrian. We will work to gather those details for you. But for now, I would advise you look for a different route. I am still combing through some different solutions, so we'll find the answers. But right now, elsewhere around town, it's going to be the same story. We're seeing a buildup on a lot of those usual spots as well. US 90 traveling east uh, right there by 1604. If you're heading in from Castroville, obviously expect a slowdown there. But the big headline right now is going to be right there along 281 at Sprucewood is a shot from Transguide. I'm going to leave you with this shot right over here, uh, 281 at 410, where you can see more of the build up there along one of the flyover ramps. We'll watch this closely and again have those updates for you right here on GMSA. Mark Seth.
Thank you, Stephen. And cartoon-like diamond, dragon, or even a maple leaf, all innocent emojis that could translate to the exchange of dangerous drugs on social media between a drug dealer and your child. These are the common emojis that dealers and users are using to communicate about the types of drugs they have or want to purchase. The Drug Enforcement Administration released the common uses in hopes of bringing awareness to families. Those who work with teen addicts in recovery say the patterns and use of the emojis might change, but what should never change is just how involved parents are in their kids' business. And the parents think they're like, oh, I got to give them their space, but in reality, we need to bring them a lot closer in because there is so much happening and so much going on to kind of keep those connections with them and that line of communication open with, with, with your kids. And if you are a family member you know is battling with drug addiction, there's a 24-hour hotline for you to call at 210-SAY-CARE. Just over 120 miles to the west of San Antonio in Kinney County, they are feeling the effects of human smuggling. So just take a listen to what the sheriff there had to say. Here they go. Out of the truck, out of the front seat, out of the back seat, out of the bed. She's got him. They're still coming out of the truck. And Sheriff Brad Coe says these scenes are becoming all too familiar in his county and specifically in the town of Brackettville. During a typical year, they would have one or two human smuggling arrests in a month. Now this year, that number peaked at 75 in July. Sheriff Coe tries to keep as much of the smuggling and as many of the pursuits out of the main strip of town as possible, but he says it's not always successful. He says female smugglers present a whole new set of problems for the county. Very few places that will accept females. Well, we got that worked out. We've, we've contracted with a couple of counties around us to handle females. Now we're seeing it pregnant females because pregnant females, nobody takes pregnant females. For the last 18 months, uh, KCSO has been working with Operation Lone Star and Operation Stone Garden to help the department with funding and equipment. But with the current increase in smuggling, it's not a pace they can keep up with. And tonight on the Night Beat, we're going to show you how this is impacting landowners and business owners around the county. The Food and Drug Administration has issued new guidelines for what they are calling healthy food. Now, under new regulations, a product labeled as healthy must have the equivalent of a serving of fruit, vegetables, grains, dairy, or protein as indicated in the dietary guidelines for Americans. The new regulatory standard will limit the term healthy to circumstances in which the food accurately represents the levels of nutrients in food based on current nutrition science. The previous definition allowed manufacturers to use the term healthy on foods that the FDA said did not help consumers maintain healthy diets. And in the latest business headlines, stock markets may be in for a swing today ever after last night, pointing to a lower open after traders were in a buying mood Wednesday. The Nasdaq hit the closing bell up 2.1 percent. The S&P closed 2 percent higher and the Dow finished up at 1.9 percent. And the idea of quiet quitting will be coming up later in this newscast. I think we're making a story change here, so we're going to move on now to one of the top trending stories this morning. The music world mourning the loss of one of the biggest names in hip hop. Coolio died yesterday at the age of 59. ABC's Mark Brown has the latest. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left. One of the biggest songs of any genre of the 1990s, Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise, the number one hit from 1995. The song was featured in the soundtrack of the movie Dangerous Minds. The film star Michelle Pfeiffer issuing this statement, heartbroken to hear of the passing of the gifted artist Coolio, a life cut entirely too short. He won a Grammy for his brilliant song on the soundtrack, which I think was the reason our film saw so much success. I remember him being nothing but gracious. 30 years later, I still get chills when I hear the song, sending love and light to his family. His 1994 debut album, It Takes a Thief, made him famous. His 1995 single, Gangsta's Paradise, made him a superstar. Along with his Grammy win, Coolio earned six nominations. He had a varied career as an actor, voiceover artist, and producer. Despite occasional brushes with the law, Coolio was well-liked in the entertainment industry, and his hairstyle became part of his trademark. Coolio, when you have a hat like that, is that something you alter yourself? That you cut the little nibs out of the sides or what? It depends on the day. 
Coolio was at a friend's home in the Jefferson Park area of Los Angeles. Paramedics responded to a report of a medical emergency at around 4 p.m. They found the rapper unconscious. So they attempted to provide some medical uh, assistance to him, but he did not survive. And no foul play? At this, at this time, we don't show any indications uh, that anything's associated with any criminal activity. Social media erupted with messages of shock, sadness, and appreciation. Ice Cube tweeting, I witnessed firsthand this man's grind to the top of the industry. Rest in peace, Coolio. Okay, 641, 63 degrees. And if you're wanting to start that next home project, but you don't know where to start or who to call for help, we're going to give you some advice on how you can find the right person. Welcome back, 644. If you're starting, uh, planning on starting a new home project, whether it's painting a bedroom or installing new countertops, you need to have the right pro in your corner. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, we have an inside look at how you can find the right one for the job. Hiring the right pro for your home project is one of the easiest ways to set yourself up for success. One of the first things to do is talk to some pros. If you have a go-to pro, start with them. Once you've come up with a short list of pros, make sure to take a look at ratings, check references, and read reviews. If your project is complicated, don't just choose the first pro that gives you an estimate. You'll be working closely with them throughout the project, so it's important that you find someone you're comfortable with. Talk to several pros to make sure you have the best fit. Talk to your pro about the scope, timing, and pricing of the project. Give them as many details as you can so they can be as accurate as possible in helping you estimate what the timeline and the pricing might be. You'll also want to inquire as to what percentage of their projects are completed on time and in budget. Make sure to get everything in writing, especially pricing quotes and timeline estimates. Having this in writing will help you decide between different contractors or if problems come up in the future. Before you book your project, you need to get comfortable with the pricing, the timeline, the quality, and the communication style of your pro. Be sure to ask for the license and insurance information, examples of their past work, and also how they handle unexpected events or disruptions. That was Stephanie Cerner reporting. <laughs> that's, that's me. <laughs> Time now, 646, and I was looking out there. What a mess off of 281 and Loop 410. Very serious situation unfolding, right, Yeah, Stephen? it is, and we know that it involves a pedestrian, according to TxDOT. We are working to get that information, uh, but it may be a little while, but we are also seeing the negative impact when it comes to traffic because this is right there, 281 at Loop 410, one of the busiest spots there, and if you are traveling in the southbound lanes, you're going to find some issues out there, but also also, if you're traveling toward the airport, be on the lookout, stay focused on the roadways and just make sure that you uh, obviously watch out for those first responders. They're working to clear this mess up. But again, we are working to get the details behind it. But what we can tell you right now is that slowdowns are always going to be expected at this point. And anytime an incident does pop up on the road, it's going to make it even worse. So let's go ahead and get you to the map because the issue is going to be right here along 281 southbound. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a big closure out there due to an incident involving a pedestrian. In fact, just so you can take that in, I'll step out of the way. We know that right now that's between US uh, along US 281 uh, southbound lanes. There are some closures between Loop 410 and Jones Mulsberger. And if you look closely on our map, if you look close there, you'll see a portion of it's also shaded out as well, meaning you can't drive through that. Again, I am working to look for those solutions, but it's a little bit tricky right now because we are working to kind of follow up all these other closures that are taking place due to this crash. I am talking to our friends at Transguide right now, working to get details to let you know what you can expect for that commute. But it's again, Again, not clear how long it's going to take to uh, how long it's going to take to clear this mess up. It's an area we're going to have to watch very closely, guys. Uh, Stephen, I have two quick ideas down Broadway or maybe down San Pedro. You know, I was also thinking along Nakoma. If you're driving down southbound mm -hmm. from uh, from 281, you could probably exit Nakoma, get down to West Avenue, and then uh, hit Bassey Road that way. It may take a little bit longer, some stoplights, but right. it's a solution. I'll get that mapped out for them. Thank you, Thanks, sir. Mark. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. All right, on a lighter note, uh, we're looking at this picture wondering where in our area you found a bunch of maple leaves that have already turned. Very That's nice picture. Great picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're, they're corgis, right? Yeah, yeah I wonder yeah, if yeah. Jacob and Winston took a little trip up north. I don't ah. know, yeah. They're beautiful leaves, leaves though. I'm, it's, we're kind of jealous. Yes. Very jealous, yes. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. And wow, speaking of beautiful pictures, once again, we have got just a picture perfect sunrise on tap. 63 in town, 53 Bulverde, 52 Comfort. 
sweatshirt and jackets. Pretty good idea. Stuff in the backpack later on today and throughout the case 12 hour forecast. We will drop down another couple of notches and then warm up again very quickly this morning up to 82 already at noon and then make it up through the 80s and top off at 90 later on. Just a little bit of a breeze out of the uh, south southeast primarily 510 miles per hour. Obviously nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite and or radar picture except for a lot of blue skies out there. Then heading off to the east, there is what is uh, now tropical storm Ian, and as you can see, going back 12 hours ago as it made landfall right there, just about at, uh, say, Fort Myers, and the storm surge was the biggest problem as it came onshore. Now it is just a huge, huge rain producer. Here is uh, a look at the radar overlay on top of that. So tropical storm strength is below 74 miles per hour, 65 mile per hour sustained winds, and it will continue to work its way somewhat to the northeast with a little uh, variation here and there. And in this position, counterclockwise flow, it's going to continue to be again a huge rain producer. So flooding rain is going to continue to be a problem up there in the northeastern Florida. And this computer model still keeps it. The models keep it as a tropical storm. However, here in the uh, Gulf stream off the Florida coast uh, may gain a hurricane strength briefly again, and then it's going to move onshore into the Carolinas and the Appalachians extreme eastern Tennessee Valley, and that's still going to be a huge rain producer there for portions of the Carolinas, as well as, like I said, Tennessee and uh, Virginia. That high pressure is what we can thank for our beautiful weather, keeping us in this nice continental air, which is nice and dry around here, and that thing is not going to be moving anytime soon, and Good news, bad news. Good news, we continue with this gorgeous weather. Bad news is not a drop of rain in sight, even way down the road. 82 degrees, sunny skies at noon. High temperature today makes it up to 90. Low humidity, fantastic. Open up the windows, get outside and enjoy it. We'll do it again tomorrow. A couple of extra clouds around here. Over the weekend, still low temperatures, right around low 60s, maybe coming up a couple of degrees. I think we'll have a few more clouds around starting off next week, which those will help to hold high temperatures down ever so slightly. But still, these numbers averaging out right about where it should be this time of year. We're loving the downward trend across the board because it started in the morning. Yes. And that's kind of trickling over to the afternoons. I know it looks great out there and you know, I'm not complaining and it Nobody. feels and it feels great too. It my does brown like brown grass ain't loving the dry, but yeah, you know. that's true. 651 62 degrees and a look outside with a live cam. Beautiful sunrise out there. We're at 62. All right, time check almost 655. Major problems along 281 right there by the airport. Let's get you a wide look at Trans Guide right now. Big closure right now. We do know that Texas is reporting that this is an incident involving a pedestrian, and we are seeing some of the issues already build up with traffic. Obviously, we hope everyone's okay out there, but traffic is not looking good at all. 281 southbound there is a closure where you'll see between 410 and Jones Maltzberger. You have we have those icons placed out there for you, but keep this in mind also. 410 East, if you're trying to get on a 281 you're going to have some trouble there as well to 410 East getting on 281 southbound. It may be wise to look for different routes throughout the morning. We suggested something a little bit earlier. I'll have something more detail uh, a little bit later on throughout uh, Good Morning America. But as we give you a wide look at the map, we are seeing a lot of slowdowns out there, of course, along the usual trouble spots. But as I mentioned, the big one is going to be right there along 281 at Loop 410. I'll step out of the way so you can see again a lot of that traffic that just continues to build out there. This is one of those busy spots right by the airport, so we can expect this to cause a lot of problems for those commuters uh, driving through the area. Guys. Beautiful sunrise on tap and uh, still grab a jacket this morning. We are now down to 60 in town, 53 Ball Verde, low 50s hill country. Big warm up throughout the day will gain about 30 degrees. Lots of sunshine and this gorgeous weather is going to continue. Car cut and paste carbon copy tomorrow and a couple of extra clouds over the weekend. A few more clouds by the first part of next week. And again, a very happy birthday to Case House, very own Marilyn Moritz. Happy yes. birthday. Happy birthday, Marilyn. Enjoy this beautiful day, and you guys will see you back here at 9. G GMA is next with the latest on now Tropical Storm Ian.